Hi, I'm Christine, and I'm here to tell you about my trip to heaven. Actually, I have two trips in particular that I would like to uh, talk about and share with you, but I believe that I'm going to just cover the Great White Throne of Judgment, which is one of the trips. And also, three days later, of course, the Lord took me to Abraham's bosom. It all started one day after I had came off of a 40-day fast. Um, I'm a songwriter and a recording artist. And, of course, I always seek the Lord because I am a Christian. I seek the Lord and I ask Him for songs to glorify Him and to edify the body of Christ. And to be a blessing, of course, to the whole entire world. And so I'd asked him for this song, and he spoke very plainly to me, and he said, I'll see you at the great white throne. So I wrote, I'll see you at the great white throne on a piece of paper. And uh, I put it in my Bible, and I said, well, wow, that's a great song. I'll see you at the great white throne. And... Uh, so I was like, oh, I was at a loss for words. I don't even know where to begin to write this song. Usually I build on it. If he gives me a title, he usually gives me an idea, and then he works with me to get it created. And uh, so this particular time, as I said, I was at a loss for words. I thought it was such a beautiful title, but not knowing at the time that he was actually saying to me, I will see you at the great white throne. That was the only thing he spoke. And so uh, it was about... Later on that afternoon, I was sitting on my porch and my niece that was about four years old at the time, it was 2014, May the 14th, 2014, and uh, that was about two years ago, of course, and uh, she was playing and my husband was there and he was sitting down on a block that was a little lower than the table that I was sitting at. And uh, of course... Normally, I have two chairs at that table, but this particular day, there was only one chair, and of course, I was sitting in it, and um, so when the Lord came, he sat at the table, and there was no chair, at least not a chair that I could see, and he sat there, and he looked at me, and I looked at him, and I wanted to tell my husband so bad, the Lord is here, the Lord is here. But I was like the cat that swallowed the canary. I couldn't open my mouth. You know, we as Christians, we always say, well, you know, if the Lord comes to see me, I'm going to tell him this. I'm going to ask him all kinds of questions. I'm going to tell him how much I love him. Uh, I'm going to rejoice. I mean, my, you know, I, I just, you know, but when he came, I just couldn't open my mouth. I had my mouth like this. I couldn't. I was trying so hard to open my mouth and just say something, but I couldn't say anything. And so he sat there and he looked at me and then he leaned over and he did something to my eyes. He waved his hands in front of my eyes and he did something. And when he did that, I felt something, a release in my soul. I don't know what it uh, uh, what, what he did, I believe he opened my eyes for what he was getting ready to do. And, uh, so my niece was there and she just kept chuckling and playing and playing. And, uh, she was sitting, she was standing right next to my husband, but I noticed my husband wasn't touching her and she was chuckling and I saw the Lord lean over and touch her and he just kept touching her. And every time he teased her, she would chuckle. And so uh, that's another story because it turns out that she said that one day when she came to visit me that the Lord had said, come to see me. And uh, of course, it was because she needed prayer and I prayed for. <laughs> She's so adorable at four years old. But um, so not knowing that the sheet of paper that I had written down, I'll see you at the great white throne was not a song, but it was actually what the Lord was saying to me. Uh, the next afternoon, I sat down in my yard at a table that I had put there uh, to uh, enjoy the cool breeze and just to pray and to meditate and spend time alone with the Lord. And so I was sitting there and I closed my eyes and I began to meditate. 
And as I meditate, I meditated until I seen all the colors until I got to indigo. When I, by the time I got to indigo, of course, I was in deep meditation and oneness with Father. And so I was talking to him about so many things and I was just enjoying his presence and, and I could just feel him doing something inside of me. And all of a sudden, I began to move in the spirit just extremely fast. I had my eyes closed, but on both sides of me, I could see streaks, streaks. It was as though I was in a vehicle and it was going by uh, something like I was outside and it was light, but there was only streaks on both sides like I was in a vehicle and we were moving extremely fast. And so... I also noticed that there was a sound in the spirit. In the spirit, I heard this sound of what the type of vehicle that we were inside of in the spirit. It sounded like a humming sound. The humming sound, it, it, it was not extremely loud, but I could feel the vibration. And I could hear it. It wasn't a sound that I've ever heard before. And so, as I said, I was moving very, very fast. And then all of a sudden, I came to this place, or we came to this place, because at that time I knew that the Lord was with me. And we entered into a place. I know that a lot of people that have had that father has taken to heaven has uh, shown them different things. But this is my story. I didn't see a golden gate. I didn't see uh, any angels that were standing around at the gate. I didn't see the books. I didn't see any of that. I was taken straight into the kingdom. And as we were coming in, it was like it was a corridor. And there were corridors going different directions, but we were moving extremely fast. But although we weren't as going as fast as we were when we were on our way, when I first left this rim, but when we were coming in through the corridors, we slowed down a little. And also I could hear worshiping going on. I could hear a solemn sound. Uh, it, it was a sound as though there were people that were worshiping and they were just so seriously just worshiping on one accord and you could tell it. And uh, I could hear them, but they were like faint. It wasn't like it was loud. It was very faint, but I could hear it. I couldn't make out the song that they were singing, but I knew it was worship. And uh, it was just beautiful. It was very beautiful and soothing. And we kept going down the corridor. And suddenly it was as though we went through a wall. And suddenly we were up above what appeared to look like pink bubbles. Now I must tell you that prior to my coming to heaven... It had been three days that every day doing prayer, I was seeing these same exact pink bubbles. And of course, I didn't know what they were. And I said to my husband, I said, honey, I, 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 every time I'm praying, I keep seeing these pink bubbles. And I don't know what they are, but I'm sure the Lord is going to reveal it to me or tell me what they are. So here we are, we're in this place, and I now I know, I didn't know at the time, but this is the throne room that we've arrived in. And so we, we are up in the air, and we're above all of these pink bubbles. And I say to the Lord, because I'm thinking, I've been seeing these for days, now here I am, and I, see, I still don't know what they are. I said, what are these things? And the Lord said to me, they are souls. He didn't say it verbally out of his mouth. He spoke it in the spirit where I could hear him. And it was like it was a, a connection to my soul, like to my spirit, to know without words what he was saying to me. And so suddenly, suddenly, 
after all this time, and then when he, when he told me that these were souls, immediately my eyes were open. And I could tell that they were souls. I could tell that they were people, but it was more like looking on the inside of them instead of looking at flesh. The flesh was not there. And all of them were the same color and the same sizes. And they were all, the, the best color that I could describe them with is mob. They were more like a pinkish, pinkish color. The reflection from the throne gave them sort of like a, a golden pinkish color. And so we're watching them up in the air. And I said to the Lord, I said, uh, when I said, who are these? What are these things? And he said, there are souls. And immediately, like I said, my eyes were open. And then I said to 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 him, I asked him, uh, who are these people? And so he didn't answer, but almost right away, there was a little, there was a slight pause. And then all, all of a sudden, I heard this language that I had never heard before. And I knew that it was a man that was being judged. Now, what I forgot to mention is that when I asked the Lord, who are these people? And he didn't answer or respond. There was a horn that sounded closest to a trumpet. It was like, and it stopped. And that's when I heard the man speaking in different languages. And he was given account for his life, the things that he had done in his life. And I looked at it uh, away from him, a slight distance away from the man. And I saw some souls. It was about four or five souls. And all of them were trembling. And I must tell you that when you come into the throne room, every single soul is bowed down on their hands and their knees and they are back to back i mean there's one and then there's one in back of them and there are so many lines of them and they're just lines and lines and lines and millions of people all bowed and at the time i didn't notice where they were coming from i thought they were already stationary and they were in position but then I noticed they began to move. And as one moved, he was judged. And then the other one moved into the next slot. And as we observed and I watched, I said, oh, my God. I, to myself, I'm looking and I'm saying, this is, I realized then where I was. I'm in heaven. And before I knew it, we were standing at the foot of, of the throne, which was over to my right, but I was so busy looking at the souls and asking questions that I saw the light shining out of the throne, but I didn't look. It wasn't meant for me to look, and I'll tell you why. When we were at the foot of the throne, next we we're at the foot of the throne, and I'm looking, and, and, and the place is so huge and so uh, immaculate. And we're standing there at the base of the throne. And I looked and I took a look to the left. As I look to the left, I'm seeing the opening of the throne, of course. And we're standing beneath the base, like just right beneath in front of it. And I started to look. And as I looked, oh, the beauty and the glory of God shone bright. It was with brilliance. It was a beautiful light. The light was soothing. And the, 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 uh, the glory was as if it was thick clouds of whiter than white smoke and fog and water all mixed together. And it was moving around on the altar. And it was thick, but although it was thick, I was able 
to see into the altar and on the altar to see different objects that were placed there. And one of the things that I saw was a tall square box. And it wasn't a very big, big, huge box, but uh, I guess I'm not that good at measurements, but I'd say that it was about two and a half feet or three and a, three feet wide. And it was square and it had water coming up out of it. And, and the water, I didn't see where it was coming from and I couldn't tell where it was going. And so I stood there in amazement and I watched it and I was so mesmerized by it. I said, oh, it's so beautiful. That's what I told the Lord. And then I began to look to the right. But you know, you know, like how sometimes if you see something, you're looking at it and you're starting at one end and you want to look at the whole thing. Well, I wanted to look at the whole altar or the whole throne, uh, which, by the way, is impossible because, first of all, the vastness of it and the hugeness of it is the reason why it's called the great white throne of judgment, because it is humongous. That's another part of what I have to discuss. I won't discuss it now. But um, I began to look to my right. And as I began to look to my right, there was a, a, a piercing of my eye. It was like a burning sensation that stopped me. Now, I've got to tell you that the burning that I felt, the closest type of burn, it was not a natural burn. It wasn't a burn that would come from... Uh, fire, earthly fire, but the closest thing on earth that I could describe that type of burn to would be uh, a, a, a torch. One of those types of torches that the guys use, a welder's torch, and where he turns it on and is making that sound, he lights it and the flame comes. That, and they use it to solder, welders use it to solder. It was that type of fire. And I knew that it was a type of fire that would destroy immediately. And so I could not look upon him and I knew that. So I was rubbing my eye and I didn't know to my surprise when I opened my eye that I was up in the air and I was being placed down at the other end of the throne on an altar that was the color of turquoise. And behind me on the altar was turquoise curtains and the altar itself was turquoise and here I am and I felt something around me securing me as I was being lifted and as I was being placed down on this altar and when I was coming down I was looking I was like oh I was wondering what was happening and before I started to panic he gently placed me on the altar and I noticed coming down that there were little markings and the markings I could read them and it was my name and so when he placed me on the altar he did it with such love and tenderness and just such gentleness I felt like I was a little girl whose mother a father had taken and was trying to make sure that they wouldn't hurt their baby at all that's how the type of love that I felt coming from him. And so I looked around at the altar and I looked at the curtains and the curtains were so huge that you could not see the tops of them. Now the panels, they were about as wide each panel, the part of them, not the whole curtain itself, but the riffles in it, you know how it goes and you hang them up and you adjust them. Each part of it was about the size or half a size of a pretty big size house. That's how big the curtains were. So whatever was behind the curtains was extremely gigantic. I didn't look behind the curtains. 
But I did look down at the corner where I was standing on the altar where the Lord had placed me. And I saw souls that were bowed down all the way up. I could see them right straight. I could look right straight down off of the offer, off of the altar, the throne. And I could see them all bowed all the way up under the altar everywhere. And then I took a look behind me and I looked at the other end of the altar and I could see the end of it. But I also could see the souls that were in darkness and they were all the way up to the altar as well. It was very dark, but you could see them. Now, I have to tell you that the light, Father's throne is white. Everything on it that I could remember is white. And the glory shones out of it. And the glory gives light according to the word of God, which is true. It does give light to everything that is in the kingdom. And that's why I was amazed that the people that were on the back of the altar were in darkness. So here we have all of these millions of people and they're all lined up for judgment. They're all kneeling down and I'm standing here on the edge and of the altar and I looked, the turquoise altar I'm on now, and I looked to my left and as I looked to my left, of course, you couldn't see the end of where the people were. You couldn't see any walls or anything. But what I could see directly across from Father's throne is some great gigantic round openings that look like tunnels and the people that were in the tunnels were bowed down as well and they were coming into the throne room and they were in lines and there was the left and there was the right of course the the wicked was on the left and the righteous was on the right and there is a great gulf fix according to the word of god i saw it with my own eyes that divides the righteous from the wicked. And so when they're coming into the throne room to be judged, they have already been divided. They've been separated. They've been divided for judgment. And so I saw these openings and I was just absolutely amazed. I've got to tell you that inside of this place in the judgment room or in the throne room, the candlelight and the atmosphere itself, it looked as though it was inside of a mountain. That's the way it looked. It looked like it was inside of a mountain. And, uh, and I just felt that that's what it was. It was in a place that was secure. There was no way in unless the Lord brought you in there. And, um, or you came in through the tunnels. And so... I saw all of these people and I'm marveling to myself about it. And I'm standing there and uh, I begin to ask questions. First, I looked up at the sky. There was no sky, only blackness, only darkness. I looked to my right. I couldn't see any walls, only people that were bowed. And then I asked questions to the Lord. I said, I asked him, I said, so is there a holding place? Is there a place where people go before they come here? Do people go straight to hell? According to the word of God, I know it says that for it is appointed unto men once to die and then the judgment. So I've always believed the word of God, but here I am in paradise where God's throne is at in the throne room. And I'm asking him these questions. And the Lord said to me, this is where everyone comes. And something else was also revealed to me at the same time when he answered that quest, those questions. Many people have testimonies where they are coming uh, they have died and they're coming through a tunnel and they see light. Well, this is the reason why you see the light. Because you are on your way to the throne room to be judged. The light itself is very soothing. 
It is so beautiful. It is so awesome. I know uh, that uh, many people say, well, before they made it, that they came back to themselves. That is because they never made it into the throne room. They were given another chance at life. And so here I am, I'm standing and I was watching everything in my immediate or not too far away vicinity. And all of a sudden, I took a look straight ahead of me. I was so overwhelmed because the souls that had came into and through the tunnel were everywhere. They were even back past the tunnels the, the the souls were lying down even around the tunnels the opening themselves all the way as far as the eye could see you could see no end to souls bowed and that alone was enough for me to somersault three times and land on my feet combined with the questions that God had answered. And so I want you to know that there was a smell. And the smell was a smell that I had never smelled in my lifetime. And it was a smell that I could only describe as a smell that was like smelling minerals or smelling uh it was as though we were smelling something like sulfur. I, I, I mean, it was not like pure sulfur. It was like, although I've never been out into deep outer space, it smelled as though I was in space. That's what it smelled like. And also, while I was standing there, I, I felt like I was standing on, uh, in the center of the universe. And there was nothing that was obstructing the view. There were no houses. There were no rocks. There were no, no trees. There was nothing. And there was no one standing. Everyone was bowed as far as the eye could see while the judgment was going on. And the next thing I knew, of course, I had returned to my body. I want you to know that heaven is real for those that are skeptical, for those that are into all kinds of sciences that are made by man. I want you to know that the judgment is real. I want you to know that the Bible is true. When the word of God says that for it is appointed unto men once to die and then the judgment, that there is a judgment for the wickedness, the wickedness that is done in this earth. If you have done good, of course you will be rewarded. If you have not, then my suggestion to you is that you repent now. Don't let it be said that it's everlasting too late. Hell is not a place for anyone other than Satan, and his followers, the devil, Satan, the devil, Satan and the fallen angels is where hell is prepared. Hell has been prepared for them, not for believers, not for those that love the Lord. Hell is a reality. Once you're at the throne, you receive your judgment. Many of you have been fortunate enough to have experienced hell, to go there and to be able to see the reality of it and given another chance. Not all will receive that chance. I am asking you right now, in the name of Jesus Christ as a witness myself that has witnessed the things that are prepared for us, 
some of the things that are prepared for us. And the judgment seat is our next place or destination after we take our last breath in these bodies, these fleshly bodies. For the people that are so concerned about color, so concerned about where you're from, so concerned about how you look, your appearance. As I said before, all of the souls are the same size and the same color. None of them were allowed to look up at the throne. They had to receive what they deserve. Don't let it be that you deserve hell. Repent before it's too late. Understand that many false teachers will come and they will speak contrary to the gospel. But I am here to tell you that the word of God is real. It's true. Heaven is real. And you have to make up your mind now. The time is winding up. Look at the signs. Look at the condition of this world. Even someone that is not saved can safely say that it has got to end somewhere. The things that are going on in this world need divine intervention. And that is because it is going to happen. God is going to come. And he is coming this time, not as a savior, but as a judge to judge this whole entire existence, this whole entire world. I would like for you to pray with me right now that you will be found worthy to enter the kingdom. All you have to do is repent of your sins. Understand that anything that you give up will be replaced, will be replaced with splendor. Wonderful things, great things, awesome things, and life eternal and joy unspeakable. Why not put it down now and come on over to the Lord's side? Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I am praying and standing in the gap for those, Lord, that are seeking you, Lord. Even the ones that are being misled, Father, I pray that you will deliver them from the traps of the enemy and set them free right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I ask you these things. Have mercy, Father. I pray that you don't lay any sin to their charge, but rather, Lord, that you cause them to see the error of their ways and cause them to repent, Father, before it's everlasting too late. Father, you said if any man would call upon you, that you would hear them and that you would deliver them. Father, you said in the book of 2 Chronicles 14, if my people that are called by my name would humble themselves and pray and seek my face, turn from their wicked ways. And he said that he would hear from heaven. Father, you said that. You would hear from heaven and you would forgive our sins and heal our land. Father, I pray that you will heal our land and forgive us of our sins. Cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Make us a people ready to enter your kingdom. For we know that no whoremonger or sorcerer or adulterous person or drunkard shall enter your kingdom. For Father, your kingdom is for the pure and the holy. And you are the one that can prepare and that does the preparation for the entering in therein. Father, right now, Father, I pray for this soul and these souls that are repenting right now. Father, that you will forgive them and cleanse them. Give them another chance, Lord. Father, give them divine revelation. Even give them experiences of their own that they can share that will be uplifting to others, Lord. That will help to restore them on the right paths. Father, I pray that you will forgive all of their sins, all of our sins. Father, 
and create in us a clean heart and renew the right spirit within us. Father, because the right spirit is your spirit. Father, we pray in Jesus' name and we receive your blessing, Lord. Father, I pray that you'll receive them into your kingdom right now, even perpetually, O oh God. Father, that you'll receive them even on their deathbeds right now as we speak, O oh God. Father, that you'll forgive them, Lord, and welcome them home. Father, for your glory, Lord, for this is your will, that not any man should perish, but that every man will have everlasting life. Father, thank you for your love. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you for your tender mercies, O oh God. Bless us, O oh God. Bless your people. Bless the heart that is seeking you, Lord, as only you can bless them. Father, I do pray, and I stand in agreement with believers everywhere, O oh God. Father, you said if any two shall agree, it's touching anything. Father, you said that you would do it. So, Father, we call it done right now, and we thank you, Lord, for your love. Thank you for your mercy, Lord. Thank you for your truth, O oh God, for your word is truth. Have your way in our lives, O oh God. From this time forth, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for tuning in. And I pray that you will join me again. My name is Christine. I am a servant of the a living God. And I'm here on his behalf. I'm here to help you to edify the body of Christ, to edify all believers all throughout the whole entire world. To tell you that dying is not bad. Is dying and being unprepared is the worst thing that you could ever do. So take heed today. Make Jesus Christ your Savior and the Lord of your life. You won't be disappointed. I love you. I'll see you again. I have other videos that are coming up. Watch for them. The Great White Throne of Judgment, which is the one that I've just shared with you in this video. Abraham's bosom. I have many writings, many things of inspiration, many books, many plays and movies, not to boast, but that to God be the glory for all the great things that he have done, because without him, I would not be able to do anything. So God bless you. You be encouraged. Look out for my live feed. I have a live stream also that comes on at different times and, uh, it is called Abraham's, the great white throne, I'm sorry, the great white throne of judgment. Again, this is Christine Thomas. God bless you. Take care and don't let anyone rob you of your joy.